So going on, further links that you then have is, well, you can um, support a further aspect of a science, and that sort of science in the scientific community you can look at the influence uh, certain activities of mankind had on the environment. For example, you can look at mining and quarrying. How has that influenced, in this case, uh, the site of Nine Ladies? Again, a visit two years ago uh, with us with the school, where the mining area is just beyond the trees. And this is an ancient mine, oh, not ancient, but an old mining area that has been closed and uh, was supposed to be opened up more than 10 years ago. But there was a severe uh, uh, protest movement there, people camping in trees, and uh, the demonstrations went on for several years, and they've been successful. That mine is not going to be opened again, and that uh, means this site will remain. And it's a fantastic stone circle, quite different to other stone circles in that area as well. Then, if you go beyond sort of the UK setting, you can go towards um, uh, Portugal, where you got the seven stone hunters again, that have a certain orientation, and these are actually endangered. If I go here, this is a nice uh, art astronomy site that you can survey, nicely, cleanly seen. But if you see how other sites look like, overgrown, eroded, and uh, under uh, severe danger, not by people, uh, partly some people do destroy some of them, but sort of. Um, through, through farming, plantation of eucalyptus trees in that area as well, destroy many of these sites unintentionally. And uh, then you can also then look at rock erosion. I mentioned it already at Garden's Edge. You can do the same thing and see how rock erosion uh, really destroys many of these uh, other sites that ha don't have these uh, uh, very uh, proud standing stones but are far more delicately set and they get destroyed very quickly. So, that's sort of the setting, what arc astronomy is. That's the setting, how I think it's linked into schools. Now, let's have a brief look how that can really help us uh, to tie this into citizenship. But I think we've tried to already show how astronomy can link into citizenship. A while ago, I did a paper where we looked at how we can um, <coughs> present the history and development of star stellar constellations to a school group, and they can then explore empathy and explore role playing and explore the people that develop these constellations to see the background of uh, the history of stellar constellations. And in a way, this is similar to use empathy and um, understanding of different cultural groups um, to see how that really changes the belief systems and changes how the kids think about certain things. We've got the very typical thing. If you ask sort of uh, students, and these were year seven, they were just coming into secondary school, um, what do you think is a, somebody who lives in the Stone Age? Well, they just uh, think he's a brute, he swings the club, and that's it. That's what he does. Maybe if he wants to have fun, he goes to the neighboring clan, whacks the woman over the head and drags her away. That's, that's your Stone Age brute. But actually, if they explore some of these sites and explore how old they are, that they are actually in this age, they see, with these Stone Age brutes, no way setting up something like this, which requires a complex social structure, and a complex social structure that requires a certain amount of effort to create these sites. And they see that some of this isn't true, but they see that by exploring these sites, by putting themselves into the frame of mind of somebody at that place. The other thing that I've tried to scratch on is um, the environmental responsibility to see how um, the monuments as a first step are part of that landscape. You cannot look at Stonehenge without the landscape. Many of these sites refer internally integral as a, in a part you can't take away towards the horizon, which is part of the landscape. So they're heavily embodied in the landscape. And that automatically means that you link the uh, work that you do towards something that I've come across uh, um, in this uh, meeting, a sense of faith that they discover the identity and values of a certain place where this monument is placed, which extends way beyond just having a house or having a church there, but in this case having a monument that has so many other aspects and is tightly embedded in the landscape. And that also means they then can see that it's so vital that it links to the landscape. They can see what changes have been caused. And that also means that they then become quite aware and, that, um, and uh, develop a certain respect towards aspects of the landscape. And that develops quite a lot of awareness ecologically and socially as well. That you can see some certain parallelisms of how we misunderstood 
Stone Age man towards how we misunderstood maybe other indigenous cultures that we see nowadays. So, ah, and uh, this is just to highlight that this is a school group analyzing rock carving on the site of Garden's Edge, which um, roughly looks like that giving you an insight. And we use that, for example, as a focus point to see what do you think did they do here? Where we say, we have no idea, scientists have no idea what they have used to. And you explain the settings and then you see what do you think? And they then put themselves into the mind of the people living there, farming there, and seeing what that could have been used for. Um, so, a brief summary, while I'm talking you can see sort of the landscape of another stone circle I've placed in the middle, I'm just zooming around again in England, allowing you to see some of the aspects. I think the main summary is that these monuments are placed within a landscape, and that allows us immediately to foster social and uh, ecological awareness. And you do that while on site with the kids as well. And uh, what I find fascinating, these sites are spread throughout Europe, and this is just because I'm focusing on uh, stone circles and megalithic culture. And they also offer a fantastic environment for the outdoor classroom. And this offers you so many links immediately. You do not have to struggle. You, if you go into the outdoor, you automatically can apply physics and math while you're there. They can explore shape, volume, area, density, all of that to explore and understand the site and the building of the site. So I hope that sort of motivates that this turning of the, land, the monument place in the landscape and sort of um, developing all the skills of the citizenship opens your mind to become actually a global citizen. You've been looking beyond your boundary and seeing other sites and seeing the interconnection there as well. So thank you very much.